This is the FM Gold channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, now we bring you a discussion on Supreme Court's verdict on Rafael deal. The participants are Shekhar Ayer, political analyst, and Sudhi Ranjan Sen, journalist. Vindicating the government stand today, the Supreme Court of India has thrown out a public interest litigation that had raised questions on the purchase of the Rafale fighters. In fact, the court has said there is no occasion or reason to doubt the decision-making process in the deal. It has also said there is a necessity to induct fourth-generation fighters for the Indian Air Force. Further, it has said it's not the court's job to go into comparative pricing details. And it has also said that there is no substantial matter, so to say, to interfere with the issue of procurement, pricing and offset partners. I mean, some of these issues had been raised by the Congress party, which had then been taken or turned into a PIL by certain lawyers and a group and taken to the court. Your initial reactions, where does the entire political plank therefore go? Well, I think it has gone for a toss because the Supreme Court had actually entertained four petitions and each of these petitions had dealt with different aspects and at least two petitions wanted the whole deal to be actually cancelled. Now, the Supreme Court has said that it has gone into all the aspects, particularly the issues were raised about pricing, about the process involved and third thing is the offsets. That is an agreement in our government policy that a portion of the deal should be used to encourage Indian industry. Now, it has gone into all the three details and come out with a very, very strong indictment of the opposition to this whole deal because we have seen that led by the Congress President himself, Rahul Gandhi, who has made very serious personal allegations against the Prime Minister on this. But the Supreme Court has come to the conclusion after examining all these three aspects, pricing, procedure as well as offset that there is no ground to suspect any favoritism has been done to benefit any commercial party. I think this strikes at the entire plank that has been sought to be raised which was also raised by opposition leaders during the recent assembly elections and even after the results we heard Rahul Gandhi saying he will continue with this. I think this is a moment of reckoning for everybody that you go on making allegations. In fact Supreme Court pointed out that in September of 2016, the whole understanding was reached. But till September 2018, till the former president, Francois Hollande, made a comment, probably it was a commercial decision, for the Dasso to go with the Anil Ambani's Reliance Defense Systems, was not done at our level. Now, on this basis, they came and filed petition. Today, Supreme Court said, we cannot get into on the basis of individual perceptions about a particular commercial transaction. And what is very interesting, Mr. Sen, in this whole thing, Supreme Court went into the entire decision-making process. And never before it has happened, Supreme Court sought exact details as to what is the strategic reasons for procuring this aircraft and what is exactly the prices mechanism involved because it wanted details. And third thing, it also wanted to know how do you go about this offset policy. Supreme Court examined it. But at the same time concluded, look, we do not see any favoritism done. We do not see any irregularity in the selection of the aircraft. We do not suspect the strategic reasons which were cited to purchase the aircraft. And fifthly, we also realize that the courts do not have powers beyond the point to get into commercial transactions. I think the last part, which is now again used by opposition to say, no, no, because Supreme Court says that it doesn't have power to go beyond it, so therefore we need to go out to it again. But that is not the case. What the court says is, we have seen per se, there is no reason to suspect any gross irregularity or favoritism or any process being violated. We've heard the finance minister who also held the defense portfolio coming out very strongly taking on the opposition. But that said, sir, we also saw in the parliament that the Congress was saying that, well, they will continue with the demand for a joint parliamentary committee probe. Does a Supreme Court verdict necessarily affect whether there should be or should not be a JPC? How does it function? If the reasons which are being cited by the opposition for joint parliamentary probe, those reasons have been knocked down by the Supreme Court. Now, that apart, let's assume that opposition has every right to demand a JPC. And demanding a JPC is not new. But that matter has to be first discussed in the House because it is Parliament which decides to set up the JPC. Because in order to decide whether there should be a JPC or not, the forum is not some outside statement by any leader. It has to be decided on the floor of Parliament. And for that, you need to have a structured debate. Because the debate has to be that the House resolves to set up a joint committee to probe the issue. Then you will have to have a debate as to what are the issues, what is left out 
that Supreme Court has already said and what needs to go further. I think more than that, the counter that has been provided by the BJP President Amit Shah today, asking very specific reason, if Congress had all the information about all these things, why are they not going to the Supreme Court? Because today the Congress main defense is that we did not go to the Supreme Court. Therefore, Supreme Court verdict is not applicable to us. It is not our issues that went to the Supreme Court. Now, this is playing with words, I feel, because the basic thing is, whatever the Congress raised, but the same thing that was there in the four petitions that were filed in the Supreme Court. Now the Congress takes the stand, since our issues were not settled in the Supreme Court, we are not getting into it. I am asking a question. Suppose the Supreme Court given a decision which is a setback for the government. Will the Congress say that since our issues were discussed, so we don't take into consideration the Supreme Court? You've seen political parties and issues before elections more than many of us. With the elections coming up and this kind of a judgment being given by the Supreme Court, how does the Congress or the opposition, so to say, negotiate now through this? I mean, do they go through or they'll have to withdraw? Where does it stand? No, I, you see, the opposition, for its very reason, since this is an election year and you are going to have parliamentary elections by early next year, they will not give up this issue. But what will happen is they will be going around the issue because they want to keep the alive issue. As of now, a baseless allegation that everybody is corrupt in this government. And some of the charges made by Rahul Gandhi, which is totally unsubstantiated today, was that the Prime Minister is also involved in graft. This is a very serious charge against the head of government without a shred of evidence. Now today, after this, to go on pursuing it will be only a political ploy. Because, you see, after all, as I said, the demand for JPC has to be discussed in the House. In the Lok Sabha, the opposition has to make a case now, it is quite obvious the BJP will not easily accept this because the government stand is, we have no problem with JPC, but let's first debate it and vote it in the House. If you go into the legal arguments that the Supreme Court considered before arriving today, it has taken into account the decision that was taken then to go for this kind of aircraft. And that started something in 2012. In fact, it started much earlier, but it was around 2011-12 when things started settling down. In fact, there was a first kind of an agreement for negotiating to buy this aircraft. But what are the reasons that the previous UPA government could not conclude a deal? That is, it could not conclude the deal by 2013 and the things remained in a limbo. And by 2014, I think, UPA government decided not to proceed. Now, we come to 2014, there is a change of government. Air Force makes this request to the new government, says this is something we need it. We need immediately to boost our defense because we are in a situation where our threat perception and in terms of what the nations Act around us have, have already gone in for fifth generation aircraft. We need to do it immediately. Already there has been a gap from 2017 to 2014. Seven years have already lapsed because we could not settle. Now that is also interesting. What was it? that prevented the UPA government from reaching an agreement or coming to a decision on purchasing their aircraft. Of course, at that time it was a talk of joint manufacture 126 with 18 aircraft coming forming the first squadron. Supreme Court has also said the decision whether to procure 26 or 126 fighter jets lies with the government and cannot compel the government. And it has also interestingly made this observation that personal perceptions of people on the deal matters little, and the judiciary will have to be very, very careful of the jurisdiction that it is going on to. And these are exactly the points that were being thrown around, saying that, you know, why did you buy this many? Why not that many? So, in a way, as you also said, all these, so to say, grounds that had been laid up, no longer there. What next? How do you see proceeding next? As you said, they are not going to let it go. They are going to go around. But how? No, already we saw, just even before the Supreme Court judgment, Congress finding it not a good issue to beat about. Because even in this Assembly elections campaign, we saw the manner in which the Rafal issue was taken up. Subsequently, even Congress did not make much halal about this issue during the previous election. Though, after the election results, Rahul Gandhi again mentioned it saying that this is it. But now with this kind of judgment, where court says, look, these are the reasons we have gone into. See, the first court's concern was the process. How do you arrive at a decision? Have there been irregularities in arriving at a decision? And court also examined, look, there are certain standard operating procedure in procurement of any weaponry or any weapon system. And court went into it. But court also said that defense procurement policy of 2030 also allows room for strategic reasons. You can go for a special route on citing the ground of strategic reasons. And it can be with a particular nation in our interest or security interest. The court said, we examined the reasons why this government gone in for a government-to-government -government agreement with France 
to purchase his aircraft in an urgent emergency manner. The Supreme Court took an unusual step of summoning the Air Force officials to the court and hearing from them. This is never before it has happened. Never, yes. And in fact, it heard from them. Even at that time, people are asking, normally the judges are not getting into strategic issues because strategic issue has never been discussed in any Supreme Court in the world. Because these are matters best left to, to the, the government, government of the day and to the defense mm -hmm. services. It is their job to protect, it is their yeah. job to perceive and prepare and for those threats. And advise the government. But how in they this case, do. the Chief Justice of India took the unusual step of summoning the Air Force officials and heard them in the court as to what are the reasons, what is the strategy, and the court says we are convinced. We are convinced the necessity for the aircraft. We also have examined about this particular choice that has been made, though it is not court's wisdom or court's special knowledge to get into actually whether X aircraft is good or Y aircraft is good, but the manner in which choice was made for this particular aircraft, we are satisfied with that. We don't see any commercial angle. That itself is. The third is offset part, because it was offset part which was used as a saying that, that you know, some favoritism will be shown. But the court accepted the government of India's position. Look, Dasso decided on its Indian offset partner. And we don't see any reason or we don't see any evidence of some special effort have been made to favor somebody when the decision is of the original equipment manufacturer. One of the things that the court has said is no material in that in the deal there was commercial favoritism, quote, unquote. So it's very clearly come out and expressed its mind. One of the reasons, and this the government has said over and over again, one of the reasons why they went in for this is because fighter squadron strength is not as many as we require. This will give Air Force a kind of a additional boost to kind of defend not only the skies, but also get offensive capabilities. And the government has underlined this over and over again, that this was kind of an emergency purchase. And as you were saying, that for a very, very long time, there was no decision to buy, not to buy, what to buy, was in a kind of a limbo and then went into a spin. Moving on, we have seen the politics over it. Now we have heard the courts have given their mind. What do you see, therefore, say, unfolding in the parliament, A, because the session is on, and beyond the parliament, how will this pan out? As you pointed out, as far as in terms of its implication for the defense part of it, I see no hurdle being created because the aircraft will fly in October of next year as scheduled and the squadrons will be ready and support systems will be ready because that part is totally unquestioned. As for the politics part of it, I expect the politics will continue though without any serious basis. Because those who cannot accept this judgment because their politics will not move further. See, the court cannot get into if somebody has some animus or antagonism towards a particular person or a particular member of the government. They cannot go on entertaining a plea simply because this is a tool for their politics. Court is unwilling to get into this. Therefore, the politics part may continue. But those who want to push it as an issue, I think they have lost today a logical ground. Because after this, it's very difficult to argue into other things because all other things you base because Supreme Court has actually examined all this and Supreme Court said, look, we understand the reasons why prices cannot be disclosed. The weaponry system itself, you cannot go about saying by this is the thing we have got. This is the capability of this aircraft. This is the kind of range it has. This is the kind of equipment it can carry. Now, no country worth its salt will ever disclose all this because this is exactly what your enemies want to know. I think facts today made clear by the judgment will be the guiding point for the politics of future. Thank you so much sir, for joining us and, and as you said, politics will continue perhaps, but the issue so to say has been settled after a detailed judgment from the Supreme Court of India. Thank you. You are listening to a discussion on Supreme Court's verdict on Rafael deal. The participants were Shekhar Ayer, political analyst and Sudhi Ranjan Sen, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.nic.in. You may email your opinion about this program at airnstalks at gmail.com.